the configurations omega naught, omega 1, omega sub t and you could go on as well, right? These configurations define a motion of the body, all right, okay. Now, this if you think about it is not terribly satisfactory and the reason it is not satisfactory is because omega naught is kappa naught of B. We go on and then um, omega sub t is kappa sub t of B, okay. Now, in parameterizing the configurations of the body in this manner, the reason I have used t is simply because it reminds us of time, okay. So we think of the body as occupying different configurations at different times t, right. And clearly this defines a motion because the body is literally moving in the sense of time through these different configurations, okay, okay. So out here uh, t parameter arises the motion, okay. Um, think of it as time, okay. In certain limited cases, we will not really explicitly use time in our problem, but then it will still be a time-like variable right, which is why I say t is equivalent to time, okay. Now, so this is how we describe configurations and therefore motions of the body. If you stare at this line, right, if you stare at this line, there is something a little unsatisfactory about it. Think about what may not be terribly satisfactory about this. Right, we have this, these motions represented through these maps every time we are mapping the body B to a different configuration. What is not so satisfactory about it is that we always need to go back to this body, right? That's the only way we have of writing out these, these configurations as I've described here. We need something better, okay? And what we want to do here is get rid of B. And here is how we can do it. So again we have our body B. Let me look at one of these maps, let me look at the very first one, okay. Let me look at kappa naught of B, right, which takes us to a configuration which we called omega naught, right, and we have ever present our basis vectors reminding us that we are in three dimensions. Now, what we are going to say is that the map kappa naught is, in, is essentially 1 to 1 and on to. What this implies is that kappa naught is invertible. Okay, so the body B can always be described as kappa naught inverse of omega naught and any particle that we want to refer to, refer to on the body can always be represented as kappa naught inverse of that position X. Okay, and I'm doing this only with that configuration omega naught. Of course, we could equivalently have done it with any other configuration, right? We, 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 we could likewise assume, likewise, kappa t is invertible. And therefore, we could have written this line here 
for any of the other maps, kappa sub t. But we're going to do it for one of them. We have to pick one of them because they're all really equivalent if we, if we think about it, right? All of them are configurations. There's nothing special about any one configuration. We're going to pick one of them, however, somewhat arbitrarily, okay? The one that we pick is that initial map, what we call the initial map kappa naught, okay? And we are going to give it a slightly special place, okay? So we're going to choose omega naught equals kappa naught of B as the reference configuration. Okay? And therefore, uh, by using the fact that we could always write B as kappa naught inverse of omega naught and P as kappa naught inverse X allows us to get rid of the body B and the particle P. Instead, we can rely upon the reference configuration omega naught and what we will now call the reference position or the reference placement of a particle capital X. Okay, so X is the reference position or reference placement of particle P. Okay, let's suppose that this is our reference configuration, omega naught, okay, right? The region occupied in space right here is our reference configuration. And for this particle P here, this point where my fingers are pinched together is its reference position, okay, relative to this basis. Observe that our choice of the reference configuration is essentially arbitrary. Right? We choose one of them to be the, to be the reference configuration, okay? Um, It's arbitrary from the mathematical point of view in the sense of these mappings. We just chose one of those mappings to be our reference configuration, okay? So, uh, this configuration is arbitrary from the mathematical point of view. Later on, we will see that there may be physical reasons to choose a particular configuration as a reference configuration, okay? We'll come to that later. Mathematically, there's really no difference. We have to pick one of them as a reference, and so we did. So, how does this help us? Consider one of the other maps, right? Now, now consider, we have our body B. Uh, we, we could map it here to kappa naught of B takes us to omega omega naught, right? However, we also have our invertible map here. So kappa naught inverse of omega naught. Now, when B is mapped by kappa sub T to some later configuration omega sub T, we can actually go one step further. Instead of saying that kappa, kappa sub t is parameterized by b, it's a mapping of b, we can also include this in here, all right? All right? So we say that omega sub t is kappa sub t of b. 
but that is kappa sub t of kappa naught inverse of omega naught. Okay? What we've done is construct a mapping from the reference configuration to this configuration omega sub t. And this mapping is simply kappa sub t composed with kappa naught inverse of omega naught. Okay? What I've done here is use this little O symbol to represent composition. Okay? This is just, just in the way in, you've seen functions f of g of x represented as f o g x, right? Um, recall a function f of a function g of argument x is often written as f o g x, right? That's the same idea that we're using, okay? But now you observe what we've done. We've constructed a map that takes us from our reference configuration omega naught to what we will now call our current configuration omega sub t, okay? We will now call omega sub t, which is kappa t of kappa naught inverse of omega naught as the current or spatial configuration at time t. Okay, but you see what that also allows us to do for the positions. We know that the reference position of the material point P gets mapped to the current position X sub t. So, likewise, we have for the position we have for the current position x sub t equals kappa t composed with kappa naught inverse of x. Okay? What we're going to do now is observe that, well, we have this map. Let's just use a different symbol for it. Okay? What that lets us do is to say that we are going to write x sub t equals phi sub t of capital X where this new map that we've introduced is simply that. Okay, we'll stop here for this segment.